Hashtag Dimension. Hey guys, welcome back. If you notice anything different, it's because I'm currently sitting in my living room instead of my bedroom, because Bennett is asleep in his crib, which lives in my bedroom. If I'm looking a little flat in the face, it's because I haven't put any face powders on aside from setting powder, and I thought I'd use this time to try to do an actual teaching tutorial, um, mainly about the difference between contouring and bronzing, because I think there is a lot of confusion, and at least I was confused about it. Uh, so. Without any sort of ado, let's just get into it. So I'm going to start with bronzer, and the bronzer I'm going to use is from Physicians Formula. It's the Butter Bronzer. Um, this is in the light version. I think they have a darker one as well, um, but I'm fair, so here we go. And it smells delightful. The main difference that you'll see between like a bronzer powder and a contour shade, and for my contour I'm using the NYX. It's actually a blush, but it's um, in the shade Taupe. Right in the pan, you can see the difference between the two. So this one has a bit more of an orange undertone, it's a lot warmer, and this one's almost ashier or grayer, and it's a lot cooler. So the bronzer can add like a sun-kissed effect to the skin. It warms it up, adds a little bit of life back into it, um, but it doesn't create shadow because it's warmer in nature. If you think of shadows as being the shade or the cooler part, um, that's where you're leaning more towards that contour where you're trying to create actual shadows on the face. So for the bronzer, I'm using just a fluffier brush. This one's from Japanesque, but has no name on it. Um, it was marketed as a blush brush, and I like it because it's nice, loosely packed in here. Because um, for bronzer, my preference is to um, not have a lot. Um, like a, a densely packed brush would really concentrate the product and it would make it look a little odd. So I like it um, nice and fluffy like that. So then I just sweep it up. And I don't have a mirror in front of me again because I'm in my living room so I'm just using the viewfinder which is on top of the lens. So I'm sweeping it up on the higher points of my face so sort of along the top of the cheekbones. Think of where you'd normally put like a highlighter kind of deal. So I'm just sweeping that on and then I carry it across my forehead as well. And again I'm not trying to really build up a lot of color. It's really just a light dusting. Then I run some down my nose and I put some on my chin. So you're really thinking about, you know, in the summer when you get a bit of a tan going on, where do you really see it? And it's on these points that are a little bit higher up where the sun would naturally hit it. And so that's just to bring a little bit of color back into the face. And then I go in with my contour. So again, I'm using the NYX blush in taupe. And for my contour brush, I'm just using a Morphe MB35. I like it because it's it's got that slant to it. It's a little bit domed, but it's a bit more of a narrow. Like if you look at the difference between the blush brush and the contour one, this is obviously a lot fluffier. It's a lot more loosely attached. Uh, and this one is a bit more structured, so it's going to give you a bit more control over the placement. Then I just go in, and I always tap off as much excess as possible, because I'd rather build it up than have to try to blend it out, because there's only so far you can blend a contour shade. And then you can see I have a little bit of a natural groove where there's my cheekbone and there's my jawbone. So you can see there's a little bit of a line there, and I'm really just trying to define that a bit more. So I'm kind of keeping it in that area. The closer down to your mouth that you bring it, the more harsh it's going to look or the more really carved out. Um, to each their own, it's not a look that I typically prefer, so I don't bring it down past like right about here, maybe halfway through the cheek. And then if you're going to blend it, I blend it up so that it's going into the bronzer rather than down onto the jaw. Basically, I try to keep this portion of my face clean of product so that it's not muddied up. Um, or if they think about it, so that it's not like any confusion. Because if you're trying to create a shadow in here, uh, and you can see that it's sort of deepened what was natural, it's a bit more defined here. Um, so you're trying to create that shadow in the hollow so that your cheekbones look more defined and if you blend it down 
you lose that. Like then this just becomes all shadowy and murky and you lose that definition that you're going for. Some people will do the fishy face, like that. And if you don't have that natural sort of line, that can really help. Or you can just feel, like there's my jawbone ends right here, that's where my back teeth are, and then my cheekbone is up here. And you can feel where that space is. So if you, for me the fishy face doesn't do much. It just kind of builds in here, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Um, but you can just feel it if you don't want to do the fishy face. I also bring mine into my temples in this area in here just to add a bit more definition and give my face a little bit more shape. Um, I personally don't feel that I have an overly exaggerated forehead so I tend not to like really try to reshape my forehead and make it look smaller than it is um, just because I don't feel that I need to. Um, but if you feel that you do have a more prominent forehead, you can sort of create the illusion of a smaller forehead by bringing the uh, contour powder around the top as well. Now, if you are one of those people that has a lovely jawline, you may not need to contour or feel the need to contour underneath it. I have a weak ass jawline, so it needs all the help it can get. And so I just run that contour shade hugging the actual jawline, like I'm not bringing it down onto my neck. The only time I blend it down is right under there to try to give it a little bit extra illusion of singularity. Um, I'm not trying to create an obvious line. I am trying to blend it, but it's really just about creating realistic, natural looking shadows just to give your face more defined contours. That's really all it's about. I also typically contour my nose. I don't feel that I have an overly large nose, but I like to just give it a little bit extra def defension, uh, dimension or definition. Defension, let's go with it. Uh, so sometimes, most times, let's be honest, I usually just pinch this brush just to make it as narrow as possible and run it along. Um, but to look yeah, a little bit more polished than that. I'm going to go in with an actual contour brush from e.l.f. and just run it along the edge of my nose here. And because, like, so this is the side with contour, obviously, this is the side without. You can see there are some shadows, like, naturally falling, depending on where I look in the light here. Um, so I bring it all the way up. Sometimes I see people just contour just down on the side. And it depends on the, the shape of your nose and what it is that you're trying to achieve. But for me, it just, in my opinion, um, if you don't connect it all the way up to where those natural shadows are, it looks a little odd because you have shadow, nothing, shadow, and it can almost create this illusion of like bulging. Um, and I don't know that anybody ever really wants to have a bulging appearing nose. Um, so I just connect them up. And now this is where, if you had a crooked nose, you can do like an optical illusion kind of deal. Um, depending on the placement of where you put that shadow, it can help to straighten out a nose or really narrow it, really define it. Um, I don't really feel like... I do have asymmetry in my face, let's be honest. Uh, but my nose doesn't tend to like really skew one way or the other. So, so it's just an equal placement that I use. And then again, just to make sure that the shadows all look like they're falling where they go, I just put a little bit under my nose as well, just to connect those two lines that I've done. It's really not that complicated when you think about the fact that bronzing is really just meant to enliven the face and bring a little bit of color to it, but it's not really structurally going to do anything. Whereas contouring is really creating shadows and adding almost like a concave appearance to wherever you put it. Just to finish off the face though, I will do my blush and highlight as well. For my blush today, I'm going in with Wet n Wild Pearlescent Pink. Basically when I apply blush, like if bronzer is more out on this side, blush is a little bit more central, but it runs between where the blush and the contour are applied. And I just kind of sweep it back. Um, so then I just sweep it up. Now, 
So for highlight today, I'm going to use something I don't typically use, but I saw it in my drawer and thought, why not? Uh, it's the Max Max. It's the Mac Mineralized Skin Finish in Light Scapade, and it reminds me an awful lot of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. And there are two brushes that I rotate between when I'm highlighting, so um, they're both by Morphe. I sound like I'm shilling Morphe a lot, it's just those are the brushes that I have. So the fan brush that I have is the Morphe R12, and then the more sort of rounded brush is the M501. Both of them work um, well for highlighter, um, it's just a matter of what I happen to reach for that day. And I have to say, side note, if you hear big YouTubers saying that Morphe brushes never shed and that they're like super amazing, mind-blowing quality, um, take it with a grain of salt because both of these do shed. Um, I haven't had this one a particularly long time, like we're talking maybe like eight months to a year. And it's not something that I like wash all the time. Um, because it just goes in highlighter, so it's not like it's going into like a dark shadow or a blush or anything like that. And it's pretty splayed. Like, I don't know if it'll... Maybe on my shirt. There. Yeah! <laughs> you can see that it's fairly splayed, and it's not being treated roughly at all. Uh, and then this one, it's not splayed, but every now and then, like, at least once a week, I'd say, I have like a little black brush hair on my face that I have to go in and pick off. So they do shed, um, and if people say that they absolutely never shed and they're the most amazing things ever, and then they give you a discount code, buyer beware. That's all I can say. Uh, and that's not to throw shade at Morphe because I do, I do obviously I use them, uh, and there are other Morphe brushes that I really like, but um, anyways. I didn't tell you what the blush brush was that I used. It was from Luxie. And it's the 514 blush brush, and I love these. All my my Luxie brushes I've got were from previous Ipsy bags. I really love them. So I'm hoping that they're going to have some Black Friday deals because I would replace, especially this one, I would replace it with a Luxie brush because their brushes are phenomenal uh, and reasonably priced as well. Anyways, highlight. Today uh, I'm going to use this one. Uh, no rhyme or reason. So I just kind of swirl it in. And so if contouring is creating shadows, highlighting is the exact opposite. Um, I mean, it's right there in the name, it's highlighting. So it's really sort of gonna make whatever you apply it to more prominent to the eye. Like it's all about visual effects. That's really all it's about. Um, so I just kind of swirl it around. I tend to bring it up a little bit onto the bottom part of my temple, just so that it's not like, here's a line of highlight. Um, but the most heavily concentrated area is right on the top of that cheekbone there. And even with the fan brush, I tend to like do it in sort of circular motions, um, just so that it's not a harsh line. And then I bring it down the top of my nose. Some people put it on the tip of their nose. I it's not my preference, so I don't bother with that. Uh, but I also put it across the top of my upper lip on that Cupid's bow part. And then whatever's just left over after that, I just kind of really lightly sweep it up here. And that is that. And you can see the difference. Like there is a little bit more life to it. Like my forehead is a lot warmer and there's clearly defen defension. We're gonna go with it. We're making it a word. Um, defension. There's extra dimension and definition. There is defension. All right, guys, I have to go um, change my daughter's sheets before my mother gets here and tells me that my daughter's bed is made very messily. Uh, so <laughs> the struggle is real. Anyways, I will talk to you later. I will see you in the next video. And until then, be a decent human being. Bye for now. Take two. Motherfucker. Uh, hashtag Difension. <laughs> Fuck me. Prime correct and set. What would you correct with a setting spray? I don't know what that means. Keeps colors from fading. Okay. Primes, corrects, and sets. 
What does correcting mean? How do you correct something with a setting spray? Let me know. There's a lot in my life I'd like to correct. If this'll do it, fuck yeah.